Now let's take a look at helping your audience understand. While it may be easy to predict the concepts that meet one of the three criteria, difficult language, difficult to picture, and difficult to believe, enhancing your audience's understanding will require careful explanatory strategies. It is also likely that there will be other concepts or ideas that will be challenging for your audience. You know, sometimes your topic will be unfamiliar to some of your audience members because they will not have any experience with that particular topic. What seems familiar to you might not be part of your audience's experience. This is where understanding our individual intersectional experiences and learning more about the identities and experiences of an audience will be extremely helpful when explaining your topic. An important strategy to help your audience understand a topic is to use clear definition. If you are explaining a concept that might be unfamiliar to some members of your audience or that might be easily misunderstood, it is always helpful to define your topic at the very beginning of your speech. A good definition is a precise explanation of the concept and includes the characteristics of the thing that's being defined. Your definition should use words that your audience already knows, and you should not define a word with other versions of that same word. For instance, it is not helpful to define a surprise as something that is surprising. Definitions can provide valuable information to identify if something is included or excluded in the concept or thing, as well as examples and commonly misidentified non-examples. For example, Merriam-Webster defines a fruit as the usually edible reproductive body of a seed plant. While most people would re readily define apples, grapes, and pears as types of fruit, it is important to note that tomatoes, cucumbers, and bell peppers are also types of fruit because they contain the seeds for the plant. In some cases, it might also be helpful to share a word's history to help in some cases, it might also be helpful to share a word's history to help your audience understand the origin of the word. This is especially useful if a word has a different denotative and connotative definitions. The denotative definition of a word is the dic dictionary definition or the literal definition that explains how the word is used in formal context. The connotative definition of a word includes an ex explanation of how the word is used in contemporary context, including an informal talk along with emotional responses that might be evoked for the word. For example, the word snake can be used to be referred to a type of reptile, which is the denotative meaning, or it could be a person who is deceitful and cannot be trusted, which is the connotative meaning. Likewise, the word home can be referred to as a physical structure in which people live, or can evoke emotions of love and belonging with other people who you care about. Now, let's take a look at humor. Humor, which are sayings, words, or examples that an audience finds funny, is another strategy that can help you keep your audience's attention as well as make your message memorable. The more memorable your message is, the more likely it will be that your audience will learn what you are trying to teach them. A well-timed joke, a carefully placed pun, a thoughtful meme, or a funny anecdote can help to emphasize a point and keep your audience engaged and focused on listening to your presentation or whatever you're saying. If the humor you are using is directly related to the argument that you are making and is understood by the entire audience, then it can be a very valuable way to help your audience focus on and understand your message. However, keep in mind, using humor is also risky. A lot of humor relies on culturally situated experiences and context clues. So if you have a so if you have a diverse audience with a wide range of identities, social positions, and experiences, you might inadvertently alienate part of your audience. Therefore, choose your humorous words, memes, stories, and examples carefully. Now, let's take a look at rewards. Another strategy to help keep your audience's attention so that they can better understand your message is to use rewards. 
you can either help your audience understand the intrinsic rewards, which are internal rewards, such as satisfaction and a sense of achievement that they will gain from learning about your topic. Or you can use extrinsic awards, which are external rewards, such as points, giving out food, or praise them. Now, for example, if you are giving a speech about the importance of time management, in the audience relevant statement that you can mention in your introduction, you might entice your audience members with intrinsic rewards, such as feeling calmer, having more time for relaxation and fun, and feeling more accomplished. You might also, however, offer some external rewards, such as giving a planner to an audience member who answers the most questions correctly. Now, let's take a look at participation. Another way to keep your audience engaged in your presentation is to keep them involved in some way. You know, having audience members repeat keywords, get involved in demonstrations, answer questions, or participate in other ways can help to maintain attention and increase learning. You know, many people learn fast or learn best by doing so. So having some of your audience members practice what you are teaching can help the message stick. Next, let's take a look at use signposts and repetition. Now, when you are reading a textbook or a news article, there are visual indicators that help you navigate as you read. You know, there are oftentimes headers or bold face words to help highlight and maintain spaces and new paragraphs to indicate when a new big idea is being introduced and subheaders or bullet points to indicate when there are multiple components in an idea. Now, all of these serve as a visual indicator of how ideas fit together. And if you find your attention wavering or have trouble understanding something, it is easy to go back and reread a few paragraphs to make sure you understood the ideas. Now, when we are giving a presentation, or we do not have these textual features, for example, such as the podcast, if you're listening via podcast. We do not have these textual features to give your audience cues about how the content fits together or how the opportunity to do an instant replay of your a replay of your speech. This is why it's important to use signposts, clear transitions, and repeat key ideas by sharing in the preview of main points at the end of the introduction, in the body of the speech, and in the review of main points at the end of the speech. So repetition is key to remembering. Next, let's take a look at using all of the senses. Now, another way that you can help your and help keep your audience's attention and help them remember your speech is to involve all of the senses in the presentation. Whereas you can use vivid language to help invoke the senses when writing a paper, speeches offer the additional opportunity to use vivid language and to actually invoke any of the five senses, sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch. For example, you can show a diagram and photographs of a particular cathedral if you're trying to help the audience visualize the reconstruction process of a historical place. If you are trying to help your audience understand the difference between jazz and blues, you can play short clips of each of the music and point out the features that make each distinct. You might bring small jars of spices or samples of a particular cultural dish for your audience to eat if you are trying to explain how different types of cinnamon or fresh local ingredients can change the profile of a favorite food. Now, involving the senses is very important. If you can do so, go for it. 